Great Minds in STEM has evolved substantially over the last two and a half decades. What started as a conference to honor the best and brightest Hispanic engineers and scientists has grown into a multi-million dollar nonprofit with programming that reaches K through 12 students, parents and teachers, college students and professors and administrators, professional engineers and scientists in the laboratories, factories, research facilities, and data centers, executives across defense information, technology, consumer electronic, automotive, and aerospace industries, leaders and heroes from the many agencies under the defense, homeland security, education, and energy departments of our government, you know, since we have so many engineers and scientists here, I know you are more comfortable, they tell me, dealing with data and numbers, so let me throw a few at you. The HENAC conference has taken place in 11 cities across four states, California, Texas, Florida, and now the great state of Louisiana. Over 80,000 STEM professionals, Hispanic STEM students, members, of academia, high school and middle school educators and sister nonprofit organizations have attended the past 24 conferences. Great Minds in STEM's Education Programs Division launched in 2001 with the Viva Technology Program and since then they've added the STEM Up Initiative, the STEM Showdown and the K through 12 Educators Institute. Right? Together, these dynamic and innovative programs have reached nearly 200,000 K through 12 students, teachers, and parents in underserved communities across 18 states. Yeah. Those are really impressive numbers. What all of these numbers underscore is great minds in STEM's ability to bring a vast array of stakeholders together to deliver these programs and positively impact our communities. Many of the students and communities they reach aren't just Hispanic anymore. The challenges of producing technically competent workers to fuel America's tomorrow aren't just limited to this one community. This is an American challenge that affects every segment of the population. Now, to present the award for executive excellence, please welcome Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President of Engineering for Operations and Technology at the Boeing Company, Dr. John Tracy. I just want to tell you that Dr. Tracy is also the HENAC engineer from 2006 of the year and a Hall of Fame member. Hello, everybody. Exe <laughs> Executives like Mr. Arturo Art Rosales don't get where they are without outstanding leadership skills and impeccable credentials as an engineer. Ask anyone at the Boeing Company, and they'll tell you Mr. Rosales is a consummate professional who has a leadership role in some of the most successful satellite programs in the industry year after year. He's widely recognized in his field and highly lauded with awards and commendations. Mr. Rosales is the Director of Operations for Commercial Satellite Systems within the Space and Intelligence Systems Organization. He is responsible for the facilities planning and coordination of the hardware delivery to ensure the on-schedule performance of more than $2 billion in commercial contracts. As an executive with the Boeing Company, Mr. Rosales has had primary responsibility for financial performance, strategic planning, technical and international research and development on numerous satellite programs. He's an advocate of improving processes that save time and money. On one satellite program alone, he reduced the build time by more than 30% and doubled the earnings. Mr. Rosales was selected as a 100 most important Hispanics in business and technology by Hispanic Engineer and Information Technology Magazine in 2011, 2010, 2006, 2003. I could go on. 
1999, he received his company's highest corporate award. He's also received the Professional Achievement Award from the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers in 1993 and the Star Award just last year in 2012. Honored guests, I'm happy to present the award for executive excellence to Arturo Art Rosales. Thank you, John. I like that the agenda gave me some time to recover from the dance with one of the victory bells, so I think I got, okay. When I think of executive excellence, I remember 25 years ago when an executive said one sentence that changed my perspective about everything. He asked me to re represent the company with an outreach to an underserved school. It proved to be an entire school district. And when I told the executive I could not possibly work all this, he replied, Art, I'm not asking you to work it, I'm asking you to lead it. That symbolic kick led me to think, behave, and respond differently. And in a word, it made me grow. I believe it's those kinds of pivotal moments that make a difference, and I apply that simple lead it lesson to those I mentor today. The challenge facing so many of our Hispanic youth today is not desire, it's opportunity. To the managers and executives, I say, have the courage to provide the leaded opportunities to your young employees. To those starting their careers, I say, embrace the opportunities and run with it. If you reach for the stars, you will grab them. I believe that tomorrow's Nobel Prize winners are right here in front of us, but they need our leadership and encouragement. Thank you. <laughs> 